Welcome back to Waiting in Laodicea. I'm your host, A.T. Martinez, and today we're going to be covering the second of our top movie series on the God's Not Dead series. So, obviously, this is God's Not Dead 2. Now, God's Not Dead 2 is about a teacher who teaches history and mentions Jesus Christ during a history lesson. This situation is blown out of proportion by the school board and several members in society the community around it. It further gets blown out of proportion when it comes out that this teacher has been counseling a student out of class who is dealing with a loss. In that, she did mention the fact that Christ helps her get through things. Now, the teacher, Melissa Joan Hart, who was, for those of you who remember her from Sabrina the Teenage Witch, that's her. She's obviously older. She's no longer a little teenager. And she she does a wonderful job portraying the teacher. And we see a community that rises up both ways. One, to keep her from proselytizing during class and using the school as a doorway into finding converts. And those that are sitting there saying she has a right to have her beliefs. Now, the culmination of this movie is a lawsuit. If Melissa Joan Hart's character, the teacher, loses, she's going to lose everything she ever had. Why? Because people want blood. They blame her for having mentioned her religion in class and to her students. And her lawyer, I mean, for the first part of the law case, he just proves Jesus was real. Because you can't deny the existence of Christ since so many non-religious speakers and so many non-religious facts are out there proving to his existence. We know the human, Jesus, or Yeshua, son of Joseph, existed. This is an established fact. We know when he lived, we know where he lived, and all of this is just fact. The fact, the extra part, the part that makes us so special, the fact that he was crucified, died, and rose, okay, we know he was crucified, there's records of that. The Romans were great at keeping records. Now, that he was resurrected, I don't think I don't think they kept that record because that wouldn't fit in their time, their little views. That's not the point. The point is, as a history teacher, you cannot teach history and not mention the fact that Christ existed, that Christ had a major impact on the historical development of the world. To try to remove Christ from history is tantamount to removing Hitler from World War II. You can't talk about Hitler, talk about World War II without mentioning Adolf Hitler. You cannot talk about the rise of the Soviet Union without mentioning Stalin. I mean, certain things are just necessary. And that's all she did in the first part. The second part is a student came to her, talked to her outside of school, who was having trouble dealing with a loss. She counseled the girl, she talked to the girl. And as you watch the counseling that she did, she was not trying to convert the girl. The girl asked her a question. How can you deal with things so easily? And the response was, Jesus. Now, that this got blown out of proportion is beyond saying. But guess what? It's happening more and more. If a person mentions God in certain places, someone is going to get offended. And that offense leads them to think they have the right to sue. Because somewhere in the last 20 years, somebody, somewhere 
started telling people they have a right not to be offended. Now, I mean, we see this when people start saying, when the war came out on saying Merry Christmas. Christmas being a Christian holiday. What about the Jews? What about the atheists? What about the Buddhists? Well, Merry Christmas to you too. I mean, there's one thing in, in wishing somebody Happy Follow Jesus Day. There's another in wishing them, you know, Merry Christmas. But society has taken the viewpoint that by saying Merry Christmas, we're trying to shove their our religion down their throat. Never mind the fact that the whole season is Christmas. The main reason for that holiday is our founders took Christmas off as a religious holiday. That today it is so secularized that my personally my mind boggles that you'd be offended by being told Merry Christmas. The practice of today is well, Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry go out and spend my money on my kids day. That's about it. It has become so commercialized and so secularized that to complain about it is so petty. But that's the way the world's going. Anything and everything that can be used to attack a Christian is being used. And in this one, Melissa Joan Hart, luckily, her lawyer decides to say, fine, you know what, we need to punish her. How dare she have a belief we don't like? And that's what it boiled down to. And he rightly points out that any time the government makes a ruling and sets limits, those limits are enforced with a gun. Well, as a, an overall movie, it was fantastic. Very, very moving movie. Continuing just like the first one. It goes in and it rips at your heart. And it opens your eyes. And then in the end you get to celebrate with all the other people who are waiting and wanting God to help her. And she does. He, God helps her and she comes out and she's actually better off for it. And it helps unite the Christian community in, that, in this movie. And this is something that I think is, I mean, it's so wonderful. You want to sit back and you, know, you wish that some of these stories were true. And guess what? A lot of them are. They're based off of things that happen daily. So, if you haven't got a copy of God's Not Dead 1 and God's Not Dead 2, and I'll go ahead and tell you right now, God's Not Dead 3, buy it. The movie came out in 2016. As I said, it stars Melissa Joan Hart. And it was amazing. Well worth the time and effort. This has been Waiting in Laodicea. I'm your host, A.T. Martinez. And our review of God's Not Dead 2. Thank you. Please hit that like button. Hit the share button. Share it with your friends, your neighbors, your small group, the members of your church. Hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification. Mm -hmm.